Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor. Today we're back on the bridge of an American ship for a battle report, this time from Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser USS Des Moines. Now, I have not covered the American Heavy Cruisers very much on the channel. This is a, sh this is a line that I just, man, I just don't get along with these ships. If you've interacted with me on Twitter, the forums, here in some of the channel comments, you've heard me talk about the, I guess, what are probably, for me, the perceived deficiencies in the design of these ships. And it is a perception. There's, there's nothing wrong with these ships. They work perfectly well. But there's something about the American all-gun cruisers that just really, really irritates me. And it's some of it is the lack of that tactical flexibility. The lack of the torpedoes, the complete and total reliance on guns, means that you have to play the ship and approach how it functions in a, in a different fashion than I'm used to with most, pretty much every other heavy cruiser line in the game that all at least have some torpedo armament. It means that... Uh, I, I love to brawl in my Hindenburg, or or even even in a Zao, right? Even in a Zao, at the right time, a brawl is not a horrible choice. But in a DM, you're kind of restricted. You've got the one gimmick, and that is your fancy AP shells. And if you can't find a way to make that work, uh, it's tough. We're spawning here on the south side of Trap. And my initial, my initial plan is to set up shop right where I just was, right there on the corner of that island, and just, and just have my radar available and point my shells to the north and so on. But somewhere along the way, I decided differently. I got her up there that corner and I saw they were capping B. I saw our Kiev in the cap and I thought, look at this split, man. They've got a lot of firepower going north. That Montana looks like he's running south. You know what? To hell with it. Let's take a risk. Let's see what happens. And so, I do something that, to be brutally honest, kids, you should never do with a ship this detectable. And that is, I go right into this cap straight away to start to start being, honestly, what is amounts to a little overly aggressive. For a random battle, this is just me derping around. I'm playing Des Moines because I still have some Halsey achievements that require me to get, you know, uh, Confederate and that sort of thing on some on nine uh, high-end American cruisers. And uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have reached for this ship. And this game in particular, I love because it really opened my eyes to a lot of things about Des Moines that intellectually I knew, but driving the ship and looking at it on paper, of course, are two totally different experiences. So I knew there was an enemy destroyer in here. It turns out it was this Asashio. We pick him up on radar. The Kievs got him from the south side of the island. I've got him from the north side of the island. We are just beating the holy howling bejesus out of this guy. And uh, between the two of us, we are going to be able to make him very, very sorry for his life choices in this particular game. So now it's me and this Kiev in the cap. Enemy Implacable is here, so we'll uh, we'll throw up the AA and uh, and try and help him out as I've got some shells on this Conqueror. Again, I'm trying now that I'm a little exposed here. I'm trying to get behind some some island cover. There, I'm at least at least blocked from the Conqueror shells as our carrier has got spots on the enemy Implacable, who's turning to show me a beautiful angle. So load the AP and full speed ahead. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we lose sight of him here. And. Uh, the uh, enemy Wooster up there does get some resets on me. He's not really damaging me all that badly. He is throwing AP, but his AP versus my AP, yeah, it's it's not much of a choice, not much of a not much of a difference there. I mean, uh, significantly better on my end. I trade much better. My shells are much bigger, and I get those those nice super heavy American piercing shells that he doesn't. Now I've still got shots on this implacable, but uh, unfortunately, with the angle he's starting to give me, I have to go back to the HE. And I'm only going to have these shots as long as that Torpedo Squadron, you see there, my friendly Torpedo Squadron, about D3, is bombing uh, the Conqueror. Once those planes pull back, yep, I'm going to lose that sight. And that's, that's, that's a bummer. But we do manage to bag B. Now, while I've been busy being hyper, hyper aggressive here, my team has uh, lost a couple of ships. We're down a Minotaur, Minotaur and a Baltimore. And most of the enemy firepower is up north. You see a Massachusetts in the sea cap, backed up by a Grosse Kurfürst and Uster Jutland, that Wooster that I was duel dueling with there a little bit, and then behind them a Charles Martel. We have a Jutland in the cap, at least holding the points back. 
as I decide, you know what, I'm going to move up here and, and use this little island as cover and throw shells over it and just be a general nuisance. And this position worked far, far better than I had expected. I've got a really good angle on this Massachusetts. Now, he's eventually going to have island cover, right? You see him, he's heading for that little channel in the extreme northeastern corner of the, the, the cap on trap. If you're familiar with the sea cap, you know where he's headed. So then, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to lose shells on that guy. I try to start putting shells on the curve first, but now the island is actively blocking me. I'm lit by planes to my south, so the Kerfer's secondaries can actually get over this island, but his, his primary weapons cannot. Um, so it's a bit of a toss, this is a bit of a dicey position for me to be encouraging, uh, encouraging, courting, there we go, courting a gunfight with a big battleship. You see me reverse there. One of the other reasons that I took out this particular ship in this particular game is that this... I've never really played around with the Des Moines Legendary module. I was never a big believer in it. And so some of this was me like, all right, I'm going to equip this thing and find out what all the, f the fuss is about. And this is one of the few chances I really get to use it as I kind of speed juke here around this corner, landing shells on this Massachusetts, dumping shells in on this Kerfurst, just making a general nuisance of myself. I do get the opportunity to use the Legendary module a bit. And I got to say, I see the appeal of it. I really do. It is a lot of fun if you've if you've got one. I'm sorry, unique upgrades. If you've got one of the if you've got the unique upgrade for Des Moines uh, and you've used it, you know you kind of know what I'm what I'm what I'm dealing with here. It's, it is a lot of fun to use. As the Kerfers turns back to the east, I switch to the AP. Why broadside ship? I'll get lots of full pens. That, that 5K hits far larger than I could have gotten with the HE. But this Wooster has moved up what I would consider to be perilously close. No, he can't. No, neither one of us have torpedoes. But I don't like having him this close. I want him off the board. It looks like he's trying to move up and sit in the cap. And I'm sorry, kids. I'm just not going to stand for this. My AP shells fire almost as fast. Sorry, my 8-inch shells fire almost as fast as his 6-inch ones. So as I start putting shells directly into his bow, you see there I get a gun in cap. Right here, I get a gun destruction as the Chapayev finishes him off. I've still got the AP loaded. I'm actually going to move up now. I've decided I'm going to move up and, and mirror his position on the other side of that island. Pop the radar. I want to know where the Ooster Jutland is as this Martel makes about the worst mistake that he possibly could in getting in a duel with me. And that is showing me all of the juicy bits of his ship. He's going to disappear very, very, very quickly here to American Piercing. And, uh, well, yep. Des Moines doing Des Moines things. Now, I popped the radar because I wanted to find the Ooster Jutland. Turns out he's actually on the far side of the cap, outside of my radar range. But the friendly Jutland picks him up. And, um, well, there we go. Mission accomplished. So now I'm in the cap, but the enemy Massachusetts is still here as well. So we're still not capping C, as the team down to the south has kind of folded a bit. Our forces around the A cap at the bottom of the map are basically all dead. And all I have to do now, all I can be able to do now is just really support the, the team we have up here at C. Try to get these guys out of the cap. Maybe possibly just kill them completely and, uh, and pick up the C cap. And then we can turn around and turn our attention back to the remainder of the enemy team. Kerfers looked like he was going to try and come back into play, but um, nope. He changed his mind. So we switch back to the AP. Because, well, I can get these shells to bite on his upper works. Those are good full pens. Unfortunately, I am struggling with this a little bit. I think I'm shattering some of these on his turrets. I need to be probably under-leading these a bit more than I would like to be. He's gonna get, I'm going to get one more salvo on him before he's got some cover. As the Massachusetts has now decided to continue reversing. Now, I don't think he realizes quite how vulnerable he is if he backs up too far. Unfortunately, I lose sight of him. I get a couple of shells in, and I'm, at this point, I'm just speculating. I'm just throwing these shells because I have nothing better to be doing. We're approaching the halfway mark of the match, and my damage total is pretty respectable, kids. I'm not going to lie. I, I would not have expected this kind of damage total in this ship when I zoned into this game. And some of this, again, is my inexperience in the ship. Veteran Des Moines players are going to laugh at me and say, 130k? Those are rookie numbers. You can do way better than that. And they're right. This ship with this reload rate is, is capable of just silly, silly things with these 8-inch shells. But again, as I mentioned, I don't play a lot of Des Moines. And this game in particular really opened up my eyes. I posted, I posted these screenshots on Twitter when this game was over and was like, 
Man, I think I've missed something. I think I've missed the boat on this ship. Here we are, the game's almost five years old, and I'm just now discovering how good this ship really is. Our friendly Kiev has decided he's going to take a suicide run at the Massachusetts and try to torpedo him out of this position. Um, it sounded like a good idea at the time. It, uh, hat tip, it wasn't. Kremlin decides to end that conversation. And so now, finally, after all of this time and all of this firepower, we're able to uh, last Cap C. Now, we've done a decent job trading with the enemy team, although they have managed to move in and capture B behind us. All the work I did picking up B earlier now undone. This Kerfurst looks like he's going to try and run south and join his team. I'm thinking, oh, I'll get some shells over the island, but I can't quite do it. You're going to see me try and try to find a place in this island where I can get shells over, but it just doesn't happen. And in the end, the Kremlin off to my left is the one who's going to do, do the heavy lifting here and get this Kerfurst off the board. I, of course... I'm not willing to risk my ship I'm sailing around the corner of this island and hoping that the Grocer Kerfers gets bad dispersion when he tries to blat me. So, by by basically declining that engagement, I leave it to the, the Kremlin to finish things. Actually, the Montana finishes him, but either way, my battleships take care of it as I kind of work, work the island cover here to make sure I don't die. So, we do pick up C and a small ship lead here. About eight and a half minutes left to play. Now, I'm pretty, so far, I'm pretty excited with my performance this game. Like, this is probably a personal best for me in Des Moines. And again, uh, uh, vet veteran Des Moines players are looking at this going, man, rookie numbers. But for me, this is an eye-opener. I've just never had a game this good in this ship. And some of that is on me for not having played it. Intellectually, I, I, mean, I love heavy cruisers. And, and... In your, in your brain, you know, you think, man, five and a half second reload on eight inch eight inch shells. That sounds amazing. But I just, I, I, I overlook the tactical, I, I'm sure, maybe, I, maybe I overvalue, maybe I overvalue the torpedo armament just a bit in certain situations. Because these shells just do horrible things to most ships given the opportunity. I do finally, I do finally pick up a Confederate, which is one of the reasons I came, I zoned into this ship to begin with. I'm working on that particular um, um, campaign task where you have to earn, I think it's either Confederate or High Caliber in American high tier cruisers. So, mission accomplished. That was nice. This Tolin uh, makes an, a series of unfortunate decisions in the enemy cap circle, and uh, and so we we knock him off the board. That leaves the Des Moines and the Montana that are in the B cap. Now, again, I've got this because of the way they've redesigned trap. I've got this little this little channel off here off my star. I'm sorry, my port bow, and I'm going to make you uh, make use of this to go into the B cap and deal with these guys. Essentially, I'm going to brawl with this ship, and which and which is which is hilarious because I was just saying earlier, oh uh, yeah, but no torpedoes. Why would you do it? Yeah, but their position, essentially, they're they're guaranteed to give somebody the flat broadside of their ship for them to keep the bow on to the battleships. And the ships up at, up north at sea, they have to show me and the Kremlin off off my starboard flank here. They have to show us their broadside. And you see there, the Kremlin gets in a really massive hit on the Des Moines. In fact, the Des Moines is going to be dead before I can even get around the corner to put shells on it. I lied. I get shells out, but not even. But they don't even connect. And that just leaves the Montana. And again, at this at these kinds of ranges with my reload rate, I know what I can do to his upper belt. Uh, with full penetrations, and I possibly, I don't know, but maybe I can even Citadel this guy. We're going to find out by doing a real-world test here in the B-Cap on Trap. Kind of trying to get the lead right, because it looks like he's slowing down, and my intent here is I want these shots to go into his upper belt. This second salvo is much better. There we go, 8K, that's nice. Again, I think the Kremlin thumps him. He's not on the board very long. And my AP does its job. I get about 10, another 10, 12,000 damage there into his broadside. And just like that, we have a significant ship lead now. And it's down to just this low yang on the bottom end of the cap trying to hold us back. Now, as a Des Moines, I'm, I'm not afraid to, to go in against a destroyer, especially not one who's maybe one or two salvos away from death. One of the things that I realized, of course, after I zoned into this game, I didn't have defensive fire. For whatever reason, I just picked this ship up and zoned in and started playing, and I didn't have defensive fire equipped. And I saw a carrier, and I was like, oh, man, man, I wish I had defensive fire. And yet it turned out to really be a non-factor, and I got some decent work out of the Hydra. So that felt nice. One salvo, and that conversation is over.
So now it's just kind of mop up, right? We know where the enemy conqueror is. We don't yet know quite where the implacable is. I suspect he's off to the south somewhere. You see his planes coming in from that angle. So he's clearly in the bottom, the southwest corner of the map somewhere. We'll finish, try and finish capping B here, and then we'll go down there and we'll chase him, chase him down. Because I got plenty of time, right? Five minutes left on the timer, um, and we haven't quite yet capped B, so there ought to be some time here to to make up uh, make up points and get some, get some get some more damage in. Enemy implacable comes in for a drop. As you see, there my A plugging away. I do take about five six k across the deck there with the the level bombers. Hurts a little bit, but I've still got some heals. I'm not overly concerned chip a few planes away as I try to stop here and uh, finish the cap. Now, I forget in this moment that I have the acceleration mod. So right here as I get, we, we almost cap, I start to accelerate, and I'm like, whoa, crap, I accelerate too quickly. And of course, like an idiot, I accelerate out of the cap circle right there <laughs> and give up my cap points, which was dumb. That's just a dumb, hey, you know, idiot learning mistake. Now, the Kremlin... We see the implacable here. The Kremlin just took a shot at him and left him on 740 HP and makes a, makes a, oh, come on. Has one of those moments in chat. I throw a few shells and kill, uh, kill secure that poor guy right out, of, right out of a kill that he probably should have had there at the very end of the game. So this turned into a bit of a steamroll. But one of the reasons I'm highlighting this game is because for years, year, literally years, I have been down on the American Heavy Cruiser line. And one game is not going to change my opinion. But I am here to tell you guys, I was wrong. I was wrong. Des Moines is ridiculous. The speed at which you can throw these 8-inch shells down range is obscene. And fighting against one, which I've done a lot of, of course, over the years, and all the various iterations of the various high-tier ships that I've played against... Fighting against one is a completely different experience from fighting one from fighting as one. Um, the B cap push that I made early was I'm not gonna lie it was kind of reckless, but it worked and I was able to make a little bit of my own luck in this match by forcing the issue at B in a in a ship that most players most teams would not expect to find in the B cap that quickly. I wouldn't have probably tried that against a tier eight a tier ten aircraft carrier, but against a tier eight carrier. The enemy implacable. I felt I felt a little comfortable messing with that. I wasn't concerned. I could set up shop in a couple places. It was this wasn't a Hakuryu. This wasn't a Shokaku. I didn't have to fret about his AP bombs coming in to wreck me as I went stationary. And so some of that was a little bit of taking advantage of matchmaking in the game circumstances. But that's one of the things that you kind of have to learn to do as you get more experience playing a game like World of Warships. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Peace out there. Wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.